So when your pack arrives, you will receive the following. The top PCB, bottom PCB, spring top panel, the base panel, two glass fiber cell spacer panels, two 70 millimeter XD90 extensions, one six pin PCB cable, two nine pin BMS cables, two temperature, two two pin temperature cables, two 30 amp fuses, two 40 amp fuses, 25 M3 by 65 hex bases, 25 M3 by 20 countersunk torque bolts, 25 M3 by 10 countersunk torque bolts, and some heat shrink. You also will need 84 21 700 cells, but those um, you'll have to source yourself. To assemble the pack, you'll need the following tools. A T10 torque screwdriver, a T10 torque wrench, a six millimeter spanner, some plastic gloves, a pair of scissors, a multimeter, some isopropyl alcohol, a lint-free wipe, a ruler, some blue Loctite, medium strength, and a micro USB cable. For this first step, you're going to need the M3 by 10 countersunk bolts, uh, and the orange hex spacers, and then the base panel. You want to put the bolt through the back side, apply a little bit of Loctite to it, and then just screw it on. Finger tight, and then just use your T10 screwdriver to tighten it up. So we're gonna need to leave these uh, finger tight because we're gonna have to change the alignment of them all um, once we finish the row. So for the step, you're going to need six mil spanner, a ruler and your screwdriver. Um, and then you basically wanna tweak the hex spacer so it's parallel with this edge on all of them. So using the ruler, we're looking to see if there's a gap, making sure that they all sit nice and parallel with the ruler. So once they're all straight, uh, just go and check that they're all tight on the back side. Um, if uh, it does move, just make sure it's still um, aligned. So once you've finished that step, uh, you're gonna want to repeat that for the next four rows. Uh, now you've got all your hex bases on, the next step is to put some plastic gloves on. The next step you're going to need a lint-free wipe and some isopropyl alcohol and you're just going to clean all the PCB and all the contacts to make sure there's no um, debris or grease from your fingers or anything on those contacts. Right, for the next step you're going to want to put your PCB now it's nice and clean over these hex spaces. Now the PCBs on the hex spaces nice and flat. Uh, we're gonna take five pieces of 10 mil heat shrink um, we'll just chuck in a length of heat shrink in the kit uh, and just cut it to length. So for this step we're using 10 millimeters. I'm going to put some on each corner. So the next piece is the cell spacer. Same deal, just put that on top. Yeah, so as you might have found in the last couple of steps, this is the reason uh, you need your hex bases dead straight. Um, all you need to do is just take your spanner and tweak one if you are struggling to um, press something down. 
So for the next step, you're going to need five pieces of 40 millimeter heat shrink. And then you're gonna to wanna to place those in the corners and in the middle like you did before. So for this next step, you're gonna need another cell spacer. Position it over the hex bases again and then keep pressing it down until it's level with the top of the heat shrink. For the next step, you're going to need 84 21700 cells and your multimeter. Measure the voltage of each battery and place them into 12 groups of seven cells. Each cell should be within 0.01 volts of each other. So now you have all your cells laid out. Um, each group should be of the most similar voltage. So for me, when I was measuring them, it had 3.53 uh, volts, which is like the nominal voltage of all the cells, somewhere like 3.529, 3.531. So just those tiny variations, I tried to split them into each group so they're of the most similar voltage. And the next step now is to clean the contacts um, on both sides of the cells, do one group at a time, and then we'll put them into the PCB pack. But first we'll uh, clean just one group and then I'll go on to fitting it to the PCB pack. So first thing, just spray a bit of alcohol on your wipe, and pick up your first cell. You wanna clean the contacts on both sides, as so. Then you wanna go to your PCB, locate group one, which is in the top corner, Check the polarity, which says negative on the PCB. This is the negative terminal on your cell. Place it in. And now that you've got the first group in, you're going to locate the second group. Check the polarity on this, which group two has got the positive side down. So find the positive terminal on your battery and position this group with the cells facing in this orientation. Now repeat this process for all the other groups, checking the polarity is correct before put, placing the cells in. So now that you've placed all your cells uh, within the pack, the next job is to grab the top plate, um, which is this, turn it upside down so the JSTs are facing bottom and just double check the polarity of all your cells so go row by row along just visually checking that you've placed all the cells correctly in, into the pack now that you know all the polarity is correct on all the cells you want to take some more alcohol and a wipe and just clean the top PCB all the contacts uh, make sure it's again just free of any dust debris or oils take the top PCB and uh, line it up onto the top panel like so. It should kind of sit in place. And then and turn that upside down and very carefully align this panel with this. And you don't want to move it around at all. You want to go straight down. So line it up, check that everything's going to go in the right place. And drop it on like so. For the next step, you just want to take five of your M3 by 25 countersunk bolts, place some Loctite or thread lock onto it, and you just want to position it in each corner just to stop the PCB from moving around. So if I just loosely put one in each corner. Now that the corner screws are all in and the PCB's loosely secured, we can put all the following bolts in and then we will end up using a torque wrench set to 0.65 newton meters and we'll check that they're all torqued to the same setting. Um, now that all your screws are in place, um, you want to go around with a torque wrench set to 0.65 newton meters and check each bolt is tight. So you'll hear or see, depending on your 
specific model when it's tight. Um, I'd recommend doing this, checking it and then checking it again because as you find you do one side another side will pull up. You want all these bolts as even as possible and you don't want to over tighten them which is why it's important to use the torque wrench. Sweet. So the first connection you want to make is uh, this PCB bridge cable and essentially you're taking it from the top PCB and plugging it into the bottom PCB directly underneath. So you want to just make sure that, that goes in nice and straight, all the pins line up and clip that in like so. So for the next step you want to take the um, balance extension cables which come from the BMS, they just plug in directly down so there will be two and there's two JST slots on the PCB so just do the corresponding one straight down. Make sure all the pins line up and it's not twisted. And very carefully place it in. Like that. And repeat for the other connector. So the other connector which comes from the BMS is this temperature um, sensor and that just plugs in again directly below, only goes in one way, like that. There will be two XD90 extensions in the kit, these just get plugged in onto the bottom PCB and these will go to your VESCs um, or any speed controller. Um, which you might be using with this pack. It's easier to put these in now because the next stage is placing this XT30 into this connector here, like so. Now everything is connected, um, you're ready to configure the BMS. Go ahead and download the latest version of the VEST tool. At the time of filming this video, that's version 6.05. Then place your micro USB cable into your BMS and press connect. Make sure that the BMS icon is selected on the right hand side and then go over to VEST BMS on the left hand side. There'll be an option for a number of cells. Um, the default was 18, you want to change that to 12 and then go down to write and select write. Make sure that it is writing in the bottom right hand side. Come up with a little green box to say write okay. That's all the settings we need to change to, uh, uh, for the BMS to function properly. Uh, we can check that it's functioning by go to BMS data and see all the cells are balanced nicely. Once you have ensured that there are 12 groups in this, you can go ahead and disconnect from the vest tool and unplug your micro USB cable.